Welcome, welcome to another show, ladies and gentlemen. This is Skag the Bones, your host, with another video for you today. This time, as we saw in the last video, we saw the new bike repair stand that we got off of Amazon. <coughs> so, and we got it set up. As you can see here, just kind of give you an update a little bit. It takes up a lot of room. So make sure you have a garage. I am in the middle of a living room right now of my apartment currently. But uh, once I get set up in my new house with the garage and everything, I'll show you how that looks. We'll have a little bit more room. I don't think this is a stand you probably want permanently up all the time unless you kind of have a lot of open space or you have it in a garage, like I said. So once I have my garage, I'll probably have this permanently set up. Now, as you can see how I have the feet here, and I'm going to kind of step over to it. You probably want the feet uh, parallel to the way you have your bike set up, okay? As you can see here, lift the camera up a little bit there. There you go. Uh, right now I have it set for the top tube, set on the top tube right now. And as you can see here, I have a bar here. And this bar is to keep the handlebars from moving around. So we're going to zoom in here a little bit. Sorry about the camera work, folks. I am doing this on my own. See there? And then, you can zoom out, and I have it set onto the seat post. So you can see right here, it's on the seat post, and it's right here. The main thing is to keep this from, the handlebars from going anywhere, because I want to keep the fork in place, okay? So I'm gonna zoom back out. I'm gonna adjust the camera a little bit get into position because the big thing we want to look at is I want to show you guys tires or how to set up if you guys remember how to set up our dummy hub okay so we haven't made a new dummy hub yet I haven't got the materials to make a dummy hub but I want to show you when you're cleaning your bike how you set up and use your dummy hub okay so I'm gonna put this off to the side just briefly and we're gonna do a couple things first so one of the first things you want to do is, and probably at any time you're going to clean your bike or anything like that, I'm going to put my rags right here, put them on my water bottle cage just to kind of set them there like so. First thing you want to do is remove your back wheel. So <clears throat> the first thing you do is make sure, as you can see right here, uh, I'm going to raise this up a little bit. brakes are touching. That's, that's why. Okay, so right now it's not in the bottom cog here. Uh, I raised it up a little bit. Sorry about this. Okay, so it's in an upper cog. The first thing you want to do, if it's in an upper cog, which normally I, by the time I come in from my ride, I'm in the, the upper chain ring in the middle fifth cog. So you want to lower your bottom bracket, or sorry, your rear derailleur to the lower cog, get the chain down into the lower cog. You still want to leave this in the upper chain ring up here, as you can see. Get this into the lower cog, and then make sure your brakes are set to being in the up position. You have a little brake lever here that's a release. Uh, and then you want to come over to the back, grab the crook quick release, kind of give it a little bit of a spin, and then, because I have these brakes tightened down because they've been wearing a little bit, so, kind of give it a little bit of a whack, and then take your wheel off, okay? So, you have your wheel off, we're going to take the wheel, we're going to put it off the side, and we're going to work with this a little, in a little bit, so. Just kind of set it off the side, somewhere it's not going to get damaged. So as you can see right now, if I didn't have this chain stay protector, I could do some damage. And the other thing is too, I'm not going to be able to turn this crank with this chain like this uh, and do any cleaning. Okay, so that's why we got our dummy hub. So I'm going to open up one of the ends 
like I said, always keep your dummy hub in the box that comes in. That way you can, uh, uh, it's kind of nice like that. So I'm going to take my park tool piece here and I'm going to slip, first slip the plastic spool into where the chain is, right? And then this skewer, by the way, it can go like this, it can go any direction because you're not actually going to be using it to ride on, so it doesn't matter the direction it goes in just so long as it's tight. So I'm going to aim it down here, or you could aim it, you don't really, it's going to be harder to aim up here because of the cable, because you don't want to pinch the cable off. So you can either aim it towards the back. You can aim it towards the back like that if you want to, or you can aim it down here out of the way. I'm going to aim it back here because I want to do some cleaning on the, the individual jockey wheels and it gets it out of the way so not on the jockey wheels. And now, as you notice, now I can freely spin. Oops, sorry about that, folks. As you can see, I can freely spin my rear hub. By the way, just be careful on this. If this is straight, flush, your this tray might hit uh, your your pedals. So one thing you can do is, if you really want to kind of get this out of the way, spin this around towards the back. If you got it in the middle of a garage, you'll still be able to get it to it. And then you got right here. Okay, so a couple things we're going to do. I'm not going to work on pedals or anything like that. Just have a little bit of grease there. A little bit of grease there. So one of the things we want to do is do a quick showing you folks how to clean it. Now, one other thing you can do now is you can remove the front wheel. So front wheel is a little simpler. You don't have to worry about any gears. You just release the skewer, release the brake. Give this a couple of twists uh, to clear the drop out, and then just pull it out. Okay, now we're gonna set our wheel off the side there. Okay, now front wheel normally won't need as much cleaning, but you do have all the gunk that gets up in here, and then you want to wipe off, uh, get rid of any any gunk that has gotten your brakes. Also, if you need to replace the brake pads, you need to re remove that as well. So I take one of my rags, and at this time I'm taking one that's has had a little bit of grease on it. It's a little oily and stuff. Because the big thing is we're mainly just getting off any dirt. And being in Guam, you're going to have a lot of dust and debris and stuff that is going to get on your bike anywhere, actually, uh, that's kind of half damp and half wet most of the time. And sometimes, taking a slightly greasy or oily rag, if you have a lot of aluminum or non-stainless steel parts like bolts and things like that. Now, obviously we talked about we put in these titanium bolt heads. Uh, so that's not going to be a problem with, with some of what we have here. But uh, the big thing is you want to uh, sometimes having a little bit of grease on your rag, you get that on the bolts, <clears throat> and it kind of helps them out, it helps preserve them a little bit. So we're going to just kind of work our way around the bike uh, like so. Now with the wheels off, a big chunk of your weight is off the bike. So at this point in time, if you wanted to, and uh, one other thing that I'm going to do here, let's get our We're going to take our pump off. Sorry if my back is to you there, folks. Take the pump off. And then one thing I want to do, <clears throat> kind of show you this here. So we're going to take this guy here. We're going to release this. By the way, if this doesn't come out all the way, you just push in on the arm on these guys. And then you can spin this down here like so. I'm going to spin this tray so it's all the way in the back. And we're going to spin this up like this, okay? 
Now, if with the wheels in here, it puts a lot more weight on this, so I don't necessarily always recommend spinning these, your bike, in the bike stand like this unless you have the wheels off, okay? So, I'm going to spin the bike up, and, and one of the reasons I'm going to do this is because I want to get into, I want to get down on the bottom bracket, okay? I want to get onto the dropouts, uh, make sure there's no gunk and dirt in there. I want to get onto the bottom bracket itself. Now we're not going to do any disassembly, I'm just doing a basic, um, basic cleaning. And when I say clean, this could be a five minute clean, could be a 10 minute clean. I'm doing a wipe down with no water, as you can tell. So this is kind of a wipe down I do after every single ride. And I don't have a braze on, as you can see here, I have a bolt on front mech. So I'm just gonna wipe that down. I want to wipe out the front mech every once in a while. I want to wipe down my... I'm a big dude, as you can see. I sweat a lot, okay? So my bike, half of the time, I mean, I'm in a salty water condition, but my bike is absolutely drenched in sweat and salt water because one of the paths I travel is right by the ocean. So my bike rides every day. So you get a lot of salt water on my bike. So you want to get most of that off. Uh, you want to get up in here. One of the other things too, I look for scratches and cracks and things like that. Now the aluminum you're probably not going to get any cracks. I don't have any hardly any carbon fiber other than the fork. But you want to you want to wipe down your carbon fiber fork. Uh, kind of check maybe for any cracks or any damage. The dropouts are aluminum, so I look at those, make sure there's no separation there. I come up to where the headset is. I wipe this area down. One thing you want to make sure, make sure you get in on the brakes. The back brakes especially, they're going to get, when it gets wet, I'll, I'll give you a little tip that when it gets extremely wet, and we kind of talked about this before when we were talking about fixing the brakes and making them better, but type of brakes to get, but brakes get extremely dirty, okay, a big, bunt, a big, I should say the majority of dirt is going to become on your rear brake more so than your, your back brake, so let me drop this down a little bit in a view, absolutely love how this release in the back works instead of being a big lever release, I really like how this pivots. This pivots very nicely. Some people, uh, some of the other bike stands, just, just to kind of give you a heads up, I haven't really been using this a lot as far as, as, far as heavy duty uh, use of repair just of yet. I've just been using it for cleaning. But this, uh, normally these are a plastic up here, heavy duty plastic, the same plastic as what the clamp is. Okay, so the clamp piece being plastic is a problem. Where it does become a problem, is in here and then some of them they rotate instead of having this type of jaw mechanism they rotate a little differently and I really like how this jaw mechanism is is it's all steel around plastic jaws instead of being plastic on plastic okay so they have eliminated a big chunk of the plastic like we said the only thing plastic is this handle piece that comes over here but this can easily it can be easily disassembled or repaired if it had to be so uh, okay, so back kind of to the bike cleaning. Sorry about that, kind of got, got off track there. Uh, like I said in the previous video, I kind of wanted to, the previous stand video, the unboxing and setup, I kind of wanted to, as soon as I got something up on a stand, I kind of wanted to kind of give, give you guys an idea how everything worked. So, okay, so we want to get, uh, I, I clean the bottle cages off. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is I have this and I get these old golfing towels, okay? I got a, a ton of these guys, and I get these old golfing towels, and then I put some water on them, 
I use these for drying, for keeping stuff, for, for wiping down and drying stuff, not for, I use these rags for oil and stuff. These are the kind you can buy in a pack for uh, like 50 rags for 10 bucks at uh, any of your uh, hardware stores or your um, automotive stores, okay? So these rags I use for the greasy, oily stuff. And even when they got a lot of oil and grease on that, you can see that was green. Now it's pretty much black, okay? I still use it to get dirt and gunk off. This one, I'm not going to get in there any grease. I'm just going to use it for the sweat, some of that stuff, because I can throw this in the washing machine and wash this off. But I don't want, and you can just kind of set it there, I don't want a ton of grease on this. I, I can get a little bit of grease on it, but I don't want really a lot of grease. So the main part of the frame, I will wipe down with this guy. And then once I get near the greasy parts, because the bike is aluminum, it's not carbon fiber, I don't care if I get some a little bit of grease on there. Okay? It's not going to hurt the bike. It probably will protect it a little bit better. So I'm going to get everything wiped down. The only thing I'm not going to go with there with this is the handlebars because the handlebar tape. Okay? So I got the front. I'm going to get in here on the brakes. Wipe down the brakes. Um, on the brake calipers themselves. The big thing is the brake pads are pretty clean. I'm going to kind of wipe the shoes down just a little bit. I'm checking for any sort of I'm checking for any sort of debris in the brakes themselves, but I kind of just cleaned them uh, a week ago. So there's really no I should, sorry, I should say more like two weeks ago. But there's really no no need for me to clean them again. Okay, as far as the brake pads are concerned. Now, so the bottom bracket itself is clean. The now you got these cup bearings, and if you have to to get in there, if you're not going to be taking the crank arm off, you can just slip this cloth in there on the top part and clean up there as well. I know that's external, these are internal bearings, you don't have to worry about the bearings, but I try to keep as much dirt out from the cables, because this whole area here you have cables, the cable for the front neck, and I like to keep my cables nice and clean, and every once in a while what I'll do is I'll take a smidge of oil, and I'll use this white lightning oil. I don't need it for the brake lines because the brake lines, as you can see, they're completely sheathed. So the front brake line and the back brake line is completely sheathed. I don't need to worry about those. But I do need to take care of my, my deer cable. So I haven't greased these in a while. I'm going to take a tiny bit, put it on the cloth, squirt a little bit of the white lightning out on the cloth. And then I'm going to go down the, the cable, just like so. Okay, now I use the white lightning because this doesn't really attract dirt. And I'm not going to squirt it on there because I don't want to, I don't want to get dirt, how should I say it? I don't want dirt collecting on the cables. So I'm kind of just wiping them down with the white lighting to prevent from rust or anything like that. So I come down and just wipe as far down as I can, and that should do it. Okay. So that's it for the white lighting for now. Now we use that for the chain, and then every uh, a couple of weeks or so, then I will use the, the white lube, the, the stuff the white lightning has in the white bottle. Okay, I'm going to wipe the entire chain. The chain stay down. Kind of get my rag, get it inside of here. Now, like I said, this is if you have no water. I'm in an apartment building right now. That's 
kind of, I don't have a ton of room. I could take this outside probably and spray it down, but I'm not going to. So. You take this, take it under the bottle cage area, wipe that part of the bar down, probably get some neglect like that, okay? And then you can wipe the bottle cage itself down. And your bottle cages are going to get a lot of wear and tear. It's just the way they are. If they ever start to crack or anything, it's just, you know, go ahead and replace them. So now that we have, it looks like everything else seems pretty clean. Uh, so, I mean, I can see a few nicks on the, the metal parts where these shoes are on the back brakes. I'm going to wipe those off. I want to make sure that those metal parts are clean, wipe down, because if dirt collects there, it's going to push itself onto the brake pads themselves. So a lot of people are like, well, you don't need to wipe that stuff down, just wipe the brake pads down. You know, clean the brake pads off every so often, but fortunately, that stuff, as dirt collects, it's got to push, go somewhere, okay? can't stay in one spot. So eventually, at some point, it's going to recollect somewhere. Okay? So, that's why you want it. So now that the bike is, for the most part, wiped out, I'm going to take my cloth here. Okay? And now, we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to check my pedals. If I have any, my speed play pedals here, uh, they, you grease them. You have a little port fitting here. So I'm going to kind of look at the speed play pedals. If I have a, a little, some gray grease showing, that means the grease, because I use a white grease for these, unlike a green, almost water grease for everything else that I use for everything else. So because I use that, that shows me when this is starting to get dirty. So when the grease starts to get gray, that's when I change it out. I already greased them uh, about two weeks ago, so should be still good. So the next thing I'm going to do, and I'm not going to do this with a degreaser just yet because I just just did that with the chain, and I do clean the chains, my chains quite often, every week with a degreaser, but I kind of just did it, so I'm going to kind of show you. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the rag and we're going to go forward with it and you say, well, it doesn't matter what direction you go, right? And I'll, No, it doesn't, but if you go back, you're pulling on the mechanism and you're going to pull slack towards here on the chain and you could drop the chain down onto things. So you're better off pulling this way. And, and the, the main area I focus on I don't care about the sides of the chain. Sides absolutely have no bearing on the wear and tear on the chain. It's only on the wheels in between the links. And then, if you know, um, from time to time you'll get some gunk in between the links on the chain, on the wheels. So if that happens, I can just take and I can grab the chain, I can pull it together like so. And then I can go in between the, on the wheels, I can go in between the links. Also, with rag of this size, you can take this, like this. If you get a lot of gunk in, be, in, in between the rollers on the chain, and I can kind of pull it through a little bit, and pull it back through, and that will clean any gunk out that's in there. Okay, so, to, one quick thing too, let me show you. Alright, gotta go into my bag of tools here. There we go. So this is our chain checker, okay? And what you can do is while you have the bike up, you can uh, we're gonna check it on the point five here. So I can go here like so, hook it in there. I'm not even close to being in there. Now a lot of people say this checks chain stretch. 
and I hate to tell you, the chains really don't stretch. Okay, most chains are stainless steel. They're steel or stainless steel. A few of them are titanium or aluminum. Aluminum ones have kind of gotten away from. Them. They just don't use them anymore. So most of the time they're stainless steel or or titanium. And the reason is aluminum just would just break. They would stretch and break. So they kind of went from away from those chains. They don't use them anymore. They only use them briefly. But what you have now is you have these these stainless steel chains, and they're not going to steel is not going to stretch with the amount of power that you put through the pedals. I, I hate telling people that that even the best, uh, the strongest cyclists aren't going to put that much power through the pedals. Okay, so more than one, what happens, uh, chains don't really stretch. What happens is they do become longer, but that's because the joints here for the links, where the pins are, actually wears out. So. The hole where the link is, that actually wears, and then the roller on the inside of the chain wears. So I'm going to zoom in here on this, this bike, get us a good view here. Okay. so. See here, right here. If I, if you can see, see where these pins are. Okay, so these pins, that area, this is the link. Okay, and then the part in between here. So where the roller and the link meets, that piece there wears out. Okay, it rounds out. It becomes oval instead of being round. So what happens is you actually have play in the chain. And so if the chain isn't really truly stretching. The metal, it's not like the metal over time stretches and becomes longer. It's not like a rubber band. It doesn't work that way. But as you can see here, okay, there you have a quick link, and you see how you have the oval in there so the quick link can be on. What happens is that actually occurs to all the links at a very minute amount. So you have what they call chain stretch. And then what's happening is these rollers, they're actually, these rollers are wearing out. Uh, the same way like a chain on for a, a chain blade for a chainsaw. And so as that wears out, it has the, I wouldn't say the appearance of stretching, but it, it, it acts the same as stretching because it eventually will wear out your rear mechanism. Because what happens is your rear mechanism here, let me zoom back out, this rear mech is geared, these teeth are going to wear with the chain. Okay, so as the chain wears, this is going to wear. And what will happen is if you put a new chain on it, then it's just not going to, it's not going to shift properly. And then you're going to get some skippage. So if your chain over wears itself past the, let's see, where is it at here? Sorry, if it wears past the point, the the 0.75, which would be this way, see, right there on the bottom. This notch here, if it wears past that point, then you're going to start to wear into the cassette. Okay, and the cassette only has so many times you can swap a chain out. So if you got into the 0.75 like three or four times, normally after the fourth time, it's time to change out your cassette. Now I change out mine. Now here's a little thing. Here's a little thing that I found and I change out my chains about every three or four thousand miles and I change them out at the point five position so that I will probably get probably about instead of four times out of my cassette I'll probably get about eight changings out of my cassette okay so let's oops sorry went the wrong way we're gonna zoom back oops sorry there we go the bike back in picture. So there we go. That's kind of a little bit as far as checking uh, this mechanism, okay, and checking your chain. So we're going to take this. We're going to, like I said, I'm going to go forward. We're going to clean the chain itself like so. I'm trying to do this so you can see it. If you're going to clean it from the bottom and grab it from the bottom, you want to pull through the rag, not push through the rag. So 
go backwards then, okay? So if you're up here cleaning, go forward. If you're this way, go backwards, okay? Because you want to pull with, you don't want to push because you can see I'm, I'm, I can drop the chain down there and then I could scratch something up. So you just want to pull. So you can come down here and you can, you can clean like that. And then once you're done cleaning this, then I'm going to come up to the jockey wheels back here and I'm going to clean these guys out. And, and what I'm going to do is very slowly and I'm going to check for any burrs or wear. I'm changing out the jockey wheel so I'm not really that concerned about it, but that is one of the things I'm going to do. And I might, if this is extremely dirty back here, I might actually take apart the back section of, the, of this piece here and and clean all this out. But like I said, we're changing out the jockey wheels. I got new jockey wheels on order, so there's no reason for me to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to come to the back side here where the top jockey wheel is free, and I'm going to turn the chain. I'm going to keep the rag away from where it would go into the jockey wheel, and I'm just going to clean it. And then I'm going to put my rag on the other side a little bit. I'm going to do the same thing. Because gunk, because these are Teflon, Teflon and plastic uh, jockey wheel, they are going to collect dirt really easily. And they're black, so you can't really see it. So then I'm going to do the same thing down here. And I'm going to come up where there's room. And very slowly, because I don't want my rag to be caught into the jockey wheel. Fortunately, the nice thing is having the W hung up on. If a rag gets stuck in there, I can just back it up. I don't. I'm not stuck. Okay. So if if for some reason my rag got stuck in there, I can go the opposite direction. Is it's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to break anything on my bike. So I'm just. I want to just do this. And I'm just going to kind of spin with the rag over the jockey wheel, and I want to clean off any gunk that's on there. Now, I'm not going to grease the jockey wheel. That's one thing that I'm not going to really do. I'm not greasing the jockey wheel unless they have bearings in them. If they have bearings, then I'm going to grease the jockey wheels. So I'm going to go over this like so. And then the thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to then take my grease, which I have here, take my top off, and then I'm going to lube the chain. And I'm going to do it on the bottom side just because I don't want to drip onto my bike itself. So I'm going to just take the lube and I'm going to start here and I'm going to put it on the wheels. The main, main area I'm putting it on is the wheels. Now this is a semi-dry lube so it will dry and then what I'm kind of doing is I'm kind of just touching the bottom of the jockey wheels because I don't want it to drip everywhere or sorry, not the jockey, but um, the rollers, the rollers of the chain, okay? And I'm just going to let this section dry. What I can do is if I want to, I can do this. I can kind of rub some on the sides because there's going to be some, some extra on the cloth, okay? And then I'm going to come over to here. I'm going to make kind of one full rotation. I'm going to kind of keep going. I'm just going to keep dripping down. I'm going to go the big thing is I want it in these rollers and, and the rollers, the individual, the rollers where the teeth connect, that's really where I want the lubrication to be because those spin and the better they spin the less wear and tear they will take. If they become stiff, what's going to happen is they won't roll off the teeth and when you're shifting or when they're, when they're moving and they will wear very quickly and they'll also wear your cassette on, on your wheel and your chain ring. So that's the last thing you really want to do. So give it a few seconds. This uh, White Lightning Epic Ride semi-dry lube, if you get about 20 seconds, it will dry on there. And and uh, you can also put some a little bit while you're waiting. Put some on the pedals there, um, right there. 
you can wipe the excess off if you want, but if you give it a few seconds, it will actually dry on there and uh, it will then provide a nice protective layer on your, your metal surfaces. Okay, so that's a nice thing. There is a wet lube that they make that's completely wet that you have to wipe off, but White Lightning is really known for their semi-dry lube. A lot of companies that make a dry lube, they make a dry lube that's like this. This is the equivalent of most companies' dry lube. Now, their White Lightning doesn't really claim to have a dry lube per se, but their dry lube, and I showed this in the video, is your clean ride, okay? And what this is, is it's a wax. So this is a complete dry lube. It's a full dry lube. It's not like the type of dry lube that um, Speedplay uses for their pedals, okay? It's a, this is more like the type of dry lube. The Epic Ride, the green bottle, is more like Speedplay uses. I need a little, I'm gonna need to get more of that, but. This Epic Ride, or this clean ride, this almost makes a white film on it. So your, your chain looks a little dirty, but what it does is the wax, as dirt gets on it, the wax falls off and it sheds the dirt. So it keeps, your st the, 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 the wax keeps the dirt from actually get in, getting into the moving parts and cor corrupting the moving parts. So after I'm done with this stuff, I'll show you a little trick and I will do a little bit of that. So I'm gonna, once again, go down, turn, Come down some more. Now, I, I like to, I tell everybody, you want to start at one central location. The best place to do that is, is at your quick release, or sorry, not the quick release, is at the, the little quick link right there. So, you have a quick link there, and that's typically where you'll start lubricating. Because if you don't, you don't really know where you started on the bike. So, always find that, it's that quick link, it's kind of like on a chainsaw, if you're sharpening a chainsaw, <laughs> you got that one colored, colored spot on there, and then your pedals, stuff's dried on there, so you can kind of wipe it off the plastic, wipe it off everything else. Uh, you should have it on there pretty good. I'm going to go around to the other pedal and kind of grease the other side here. bottle the uh, the top has kind of gotten a little or so I'm almost out of it so it's not a problem a little bit more dirt on here shows you how much I ride my bike I got nicks all over it get the get the lube in there put it in the the slots for the where the cleat actually clips on for the speed play pedals. You want to get it in there as well. And of course, I'll put a couple of drops on my pedals itself. Like I said, I need to get more of that. So we don't want to really overdo it with the grease. But just kind of make sure what you can do then is take your cloth and just pinch the edges and just kind of rub some of the extra oil that's in the cloth onto the sides of the D chain. Now, one tip is if you live in really bad weather areas where it rains on and off all the time, your chains rust a lot, my suggestion is every day after every single ride, take some WD-40 or some of this, you can just use this and not really use it a greaser, but you're gonna go through a lot of this, okay? And you can just use this on there, use your greasy rag, wipe the stuff, put this on there, first wipe off most of the gunk with the rag. Then take this and use it to wipe down the chain and then wipe off all the extra and do the same thing with your cassette. And, and then you just do that after every single ride and that will keep your chain lubed but not overly looped. And, and what it will also do is, because you're going to get gunky every day uh, in like the area, just, just wipe, your, wipe your chain down every single day. Wipe your drive chain mechanism down every single day. So not everybody does that. Now, you don't have to take 
put on this the uh, dummy hub to do that. You can kind of just do it with the uh, with the wheel on if you want to. So um, you you don't have to really do it this way if you're just if you're not going to clean the bike every day. You're only going to wipe down your mechanism. But the problem is, or I shouldn't say the problem is, but the biggest wear and tear portion on a bike is the chain and the cassette area, and this causes the most noise on a bike. And if you, a lot of times you'll be riding with a group and you hear a. Shh, shh, as people are riding, it sounds like somebody is riding in, in, in either denim, in denim pants or in corduroys. And it really is annoying. And, the, and these guys have high-end bikes. And my, my mechanism never did that because I always kept my, my cassette and everything clean. And then, of course, once again, I kind of, uh, we're going to kind of go over this again. So what you're going to do with your wheel, I'm going to kind of point this down. So I'm going to lay this against my knees like so, and I'm not doing it just for the video, uh, but this is what I do. So I take my cloth, and I got tons of lube on this thing anyway, so I really probably don't need to lube this thing again. And I'm just going to take, and I can either spray WD-40 in here. One other thing too is I get in between the spokes, I clean my wipe off. I get a lot of sweat and stuff in here. It just they get gross and disgusting. So just take and wipe down the hub itself. Start on the back side back here. Okay. Grab the cloth and and your your cassette will only spin one way. So you can just kind of just go like this. And this is cleaning the back side of the cassette. You just do that and, and you let this grab the teeth and you can kind of just pull pull it over and just make a couple of passes like this and then you clean the back side and then you come to the next chain or sorry the next cog the top cog you just do this and even with that white lightning on the even with the wax on there you, all that you're going to rub off is the, the dirty wax, okay? And so you'll just kind of, you're not rubbing all the wax off. I've actually found but that when I, once a month, I remove the whole thing and I dip it in this stuff. And then I pull it out, put it on there, and then I just, every single day, I just wipe it down like this. Just, just like this. And it gets all the black. All that you're doing is getting the black stuff off. But believe it or not, the wax stays on there pretty good. If it hasn't been dirty or contaminated, the wax won't come off. You really have to do a lot of work to get the wax off on there. So just kind of pull it through there like so. You can kind of look at it, make sure it looks good. The big thing is, I see people with cassettes that are absolutely black and disgusting. Now, I'm not saying your cassette needs to be shiny and new looking every single day, but you don't want it black looking. If your cassette is black, you aren't cleaning it, and it's and that's going to be a problem. You're going to have problems shifting. I don't care what. You can have an electronic group set. You can have the best group set on the planet, the best Durace, the best... Shram Red, Campagnola, Super Record, it doesn't matter what you have, it ain't going to shift properly if your cassette is filthy. Okay, so you have a filthy cassette. I don't mean you've been riding your cycle crossing and you got some dirt on there. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about black, dark dirt built in grime that is from days and days and days and days and months of riding, you never ever clean it, okay? And, and there's no reason that the cassette, <laughs> if you have a nice carbon fiber bike, nice black carbon fiber bike, then your cassette should look the same. It should not look dark. The only dark cassettes are the titanium cassettes that Campagnolo makes. And 
<laughs> not all the all the cogs are titanium. So just keep going on each tooth, wiping as you go, just like that. And then just take your rag. Like I said, if you use a slightly greasy rag, the grease will rub off on the on on the teeth on the metal, and it'll actually kind of coat it, and it it will help protect it. So as you can see there, we now have a nice shiny cog. Okay, nice shiny cassette, and then. I wipe off here. You, you, you won't get any dirt inside of the hubs. Uh, you don't need to do that until you need to regrease them. You can wipe off. I wipe off, wipe off the braking surfaces. Make sure they're in good shape because dirt buildup there will transfer to your brakes. And see, I had a. I had a mark there and I couldn't rub it off and I just took my fingernail it came off I thought maybe it was a dent in there if you have a spot on my front wheels I have a tiny little nick on the braking surface so what I did is I took a flat file now they make a file for braking surfaces it looks more like a, a squared stone or almost like one of those emery boards that guys wives use for their toes and stuff that's what it looks like, but it's a stone, and it's and it's used for for filing this and and smoothing the surface of your braking surfaces. And you really don't have to have one of those uh, if you don't need one, but they're not expensive. You can get them for pretty cheap. I wipe off the rims because having a clean bike is important. It's paramount to having nice bike and being comfortable riding your bike here's the thing you can have the most expensive bike in the world and if it's filthy all the time you're not going to enjoy riding it so you're just going to look like an idiot you're going to look like a person i don't want to say idiot but you're just going to look like a chump who doesn't know how to clean up keep care of his bike it's like you could have the most expensive car in the world and if it's filthy and gross who wants to drive it you know so so we got the back wheels cleaned Okay, now go back to the bike. Now, sorry about kind of how the length of this is going. I know this is a long video, uh, but I kind of want to see this stuff. So, once again, we want to keep this in the lowest. Okay, so it wasn't in the lowest. So there, now it's in the lowest gear. And to take the dummy hub off, just like so. I'm going to put it back into the box. Now I could take and clean the dummy hub off, but it's just going to get dirty again. So just do that. The dummy hub off the side. I'm going to grab my rag because I don't want to get my hands are dirty, but they're not that filthy. So I'm going to take it here. I'm going to set the chain up into. Sorry about this, folks. There we go. All right. I'm trying to do this without making a mess. I guess I'm going to have to. Problem is, I'm not used to doing this on a stand. I'm used to doing this on the floor. <laughs> so, so here we go. We're up into the here. So I'm going to make sure that my rear wheel is centered, and I don't want to necessarily center with the brakes. I want to center it more or less with. Because I can, I can move the brakes around. I want to center it back here, okay, between the, okay.
I had to loosen this up a little bit, so. See, I mean, like I said, I'm used to doing this on the ground, so sorry about this. So the big thing is make sure this is tight. You don't want it so tight that you can't tighten the skewer with the crick legs. Remember, this isn't a wing nut. And then, about that. I'm real particular about where I have my crick race skewers at down here because these are offset skewers. Okay, I'm going to tighten the brake down. Okay, so I'm going to go through its paces here. I'm going to... And you won't want to run it there. And sometime we're going to talk about gearing on a bicycle. Uh, the more gears you have, the more gears you'll lose. The only thing you're gaining is tightness of the gears. So for like a nine speed like this, you'll lose the top gear when you're in the upper chain ring and when you're in the bottom chain ring. Sorry. When you're in the bottom chain ring, you lose the bottommost gear, so you only got 16 gears. And then if you have a 10-speed cassette, you lose two gears. So you lose, oh, you lose the bottom two gears, okay, here with the lower cassette, and you lose the top two gears with the top chain ring. Sorry. So, so the, the thing is, so you still got 16 gears, and if you have 11-speed back, which is 21, um, 20, Sorry, 22 speed altogether, you're losing four gears. So you only got. Sorry, you're losing six gears, not four gears. You lose four gears with a 10 speed, two gears with a 9 speed cassette, and six gears with an 11 speed cassette. So I hate telling people that what you are gaining, for the pros, it's important because. They will use all the because the, they will use every, they will be on the bottom uh, cog on the rear cassette. So it's very important that they have single tooth in there, especially when they get them into climbing. They want only one tooth in between the top and the you know only one or two teeth difference. Okay, so it's it, for them it's a little bit more important, but for the average Joe schmo out there. 11 speed cassettes, really, you got too much overlap. You're losing, you're only got, you still only have a 16 speed. With this, I'm only, two, two of the gears are overlapped, okay? With this, with a 10 speed, you got three gears, or four gears overlapped. With 11 speed, you got six gears that are overlapping. So, so you're losing, it's not really worth it, now, in my opinion. Uh, if you're just starting out, to get an 11 speed. Now, if you go out and you can buy 11 speed for the same price as you're going to buy everything else, then just buy the 11 speed, okay? Just go with better stuff. But, for instance, for the same price of what I got this bike for, if I had wanted an 11 speed, I could have only gotten a, the closest thing it would have been some cheaper other stuff, and then the rear cassette would have been a 1128, it would have been 1125. 1125, no one wants to use, and didn't have a compact chain, uh, crank or anything like that, and so it just was atrocious. The what I would have to go with, so I didn't want that. So let me see here. I'm flip this back. I might put the front wheel on. By the way, you don't want to flip these 
of like this as much because you're putting more stress on this when you have this up like this. So a lot of people were breaking these, not in this one, but in some of the other ones because they were flipping the bike straight up and they were they were ruining the they were ruining the stand. The stand wasn't holding because it's not made to hold the weight in the most awkward position. It's like it's like you can lift a human being could bench press, let's say, let's say you can bench press 200 pounds. That doesn't mean you can hold 200 pounds over your head for for five minutes either. Okay? Just because you can bench press 200 pounds doesn't mean you can hold 200 pounds over your head um, or or anything else for that matter. So so just because Sorry about this, taking I like getting my quick release is just perfect. That's a little off. So there you go. That's my my tutorial. I know it's not a basic tutorial. There's a lot of information in here. This went close to an hour in length, and we talked about the stand a little bit, but went over how to, an overall a very in-depth cleaning of your bike, basic maintenance of taking care of your drivetrain. So, folks, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Like I said, sorry about the length there. I know it is long, it was a long video, but hopefully they give you some great information on some do-it-yourself stuff for your bike. And make sure you hit the subscribe button below, make sure you give us a thumbs up, and make sure you, uh, you like the video, give us a thumbs up, uh, put a comment in the comment section below uh, for anything else that you might want, and keep riding folks.